Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, and Hulk vs. Thor, Banner of War, part one of five. This was pretty good. This wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination. There's a whole lot wrong with it, but uh, we're getting someplace at least. So, Donnie Cates is writing the Hulk books. He's also writing the Thor books, so why not have them combined? There's going to be five parts to this, as I may have mentioned. This is part one of it. It's a completely separate book, Right. But then the other books, they're going to be in the Thor and then Hulk books, respectively. So that's cool. So concurrently, back and forth, da 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 da, da. Um, Pretty good idea. What's not a good idea is to have five entire pages worth of recap. Um, hello? Seriously? Five pages of recap? By the way, that's beside the forward of the book. So it's technically six pages recap. Holy crap. That's a lot to, that's a lot of recap. It's a whole lot of recap. Anyway, uh, let's talk about who made this comic book. We'll go on from there. The writer is Donnie Cates. The artist is Martin Cocolo. Apologies for butchering names. Matt Wilson on colors and letters. VCs Joe Sabino. Cover artist Frank, uh, excuse me, Gary Frank and Brad Anderson and a whole bunch of Aaron color covers because, of course, there are. Um, all things being what they are, after all these pages of things, I don't know. I haven't been reading Thor or Hulk, so the recap pages, for the most part, didn't bother me. I read the first couple of issues of Hulk. I read the first uh, couple of, um, uh, what do you call sequences, what the hell they call the storyline, story arcs, there we go, first couple of arcs of Thor, so eh, half of this stuff I already knew, the other half, okay, new stuff, Th this vision with Thor, with the um, holding the owner, so, uh, so Thor, this, this, this image of Thanos holding Mjolnir with the infinity gems in them, Right away, I almost closed the damn comic book, right? Just like that, I almost closed the damn comic book. This was horrible. To do so, like, really? Again, so many damn tropes. I, I'm so sick and tired of Thanos being associated with the Infinity Gauntlets. Of course he is in the Infinity Stones, because he's the one who originally named them all, right? Aside from the Soul Gem. They were all called the Soul Gem at one point. He's like, no. This one deserves to be called the Soul Gems. These other ones deserve to be called these things instead. He's the one who first collected them all. He's the one who collected them all again the right way, right? And and some of the best stories, stories that took a long time, and, and you got to give, like, knees-to-ground praise to Jim Starlin for the work that he's done. Absolutely amazing out-of-this-world work, out of this this Asgard work, right? I don't care which world you're talking about. Out of these nine worlds um, work. But to, to keep on associating with the Infinity Gems, it's only going to further cement a trope. Hi, what about his work with the Cosmic Cube, right? What about his work that had nothing to do with either of those things? Just him being an absolute badass. Come on. At some point, let it go, man. He's so much more than just the Infinity Stones. It's like he gave up on them. Allow him to actually give up on them. After that, we got more stuff. Apparently, Hulk is still a freaking spaceship, which blows my mind. Like, really? We're not done with this by now? Thor now has Mjolnir is cracked, just like in the Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok movie, and... and Jane getting in it's cracked still and stuff like that. Ah, whatever. Honestly, whatever. It's cracked now and Odin is inside of it. I'm, uh, some of these things are just so silly. Uh, like, I'm, tr I'm, I'm really trying. And I said that the book was mostly good. But there was plenty that wasn't. The cartoon animals and things like that. The Watcher being back. When you did, and Jason Aaron is the one who did it, who killed the Watcher, right? When you've got an elaborate story where the Watcher is killed, was there a comic book of the Watcher came back yet and now he's eating popcorn and stuff like that? What are we doing? What are we doing? I look at some of this stuff and I'm just so disappointed. 
you know, I was just talking with, and I'm not going to give names because then there's going to be like animosity and things like that. And Donnie has to come on into his own on his own, you know, but when I'm sitting here talking to old comic book writers and a couple of artists in there also, some who did both, but I'm talking to mostly some old comic book writers, my conversations on Facebook, I'm talking to them and they're talking about how, you know, I remember, um, um, Gruwald called me on to, to do a book and I wasn't really credited on it, but it's not a big deal, but he called me up to, you know, to, um, what do you call to, to check the content, to do a double editing check on it because Grunewald at the time was an editor, but he was also doing Captain America, right? And I think he was doing some other books too. He was doing Quasar, but he was doing a bunch of different books while also being the editor. And he's like, listen, I need to hire people who are going to check the continuity on these books because the people back in the day, they cared about continuity. They cared about the actual continuity of characters, the stories, storylines, story arcs. They cared about these things, the universe. It was important to the fans. And I understand that Marvel is just, it's all over the place at this point because once they stopped caring about uh, continuity, and that happened in the late 90s, and, and they murdered it dead in the 2000s, but the 95 and on, 96 and all, like, they just... Ba, 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 ba. They shot continuity all straight to hell, and it was just ridiculous. But it is what it is. What's done is done. The point, though, is if you can't fix some of these things, and when you just get to this point where you're like, eh, who cares about continuity? then let's take that to the next logical step. Who cares about comic books? Who cares about comic books at that point? It gets to a level, and it's in gradations, but it gets to a level where people at some point just say, if you don't care about the stuff you're writing, I don't care about the stuff you're writing, because it starts with you. And when you make it so you got cartoon characters running around like the old... Mickey Mouse Day stuff when Mickey was first created, right? The steamboat mouse, whatever the hell that thing was called, you know? If you don't take your stuff seriously, why the hell should I? Now, some of the stuff in here was pretty good. If you're going to have the two characters talking to invisible people, right? He's talking to invisible Betty. I don't think they even mentioned in here that it wasn't really Betty. You're going to do five plus pages of continuity, or excuse me, of, of, you know, the history, right? This is the stuff that's happened to the Hulk and Thor up to this point. Five full pages of it plus a forward? That's a lot of preamble. And you don't find it necessary for even a moment to indicate that the Betty Banner that is in there, who is basically his conciliary, is just an imagination thing. It's an imaginary friend. It's not the real Betty. All that. And you don't bother saying in that five plus pages that that's not the real Betty. Especially when it comes up later. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? They kind of look at each other. They just decide to go at it anyway. It could have been a good moment, but I can't help but to think all those people who haven't read any of the Hulk or any of the the Thor, and they're just like, I don't get it. Or the full aspect of the joke wasn't realized, right? Is Thor imaginary, uh, imagining Odin is in there, right? These are all things that are going to be explored at some point or another, but there's just so many, like, why five plus pages? you fail to mention the thing that is actually going to come up later in the comic whatever man whatever it's your comic bro it's your comic granted i bought it this is my nft for for all intents and purposes uh, the battle was cool some of the things that were said were cool some of the things are also kind of silly 
I don't I don't know if Donnie invented the black hand of God, which is a hand, a celestial's hand. It's a big left hand of a celestial with an Iron Man repulsor unit in it. Um I remember when Dan Abnett created um Nowhere, which was a just a severed head of a celestial where they were doing a lot of mining in there and there were some really good bars in there, right? I remember that was pretty cool. I remember that was, that was really cool. And something's been used to this day. They even use it in the movies and whatnot. But now you have the severed hand of a celestial. <laughs> There's a joke about my big Sicilian rod and getting a, a job with this hand. There's a joke there. It's kind of a family channel, kind of. So I'm not going to fully go there, but you get what I'm saying, right? Some of the battle in here was actually really good. You start putting together a bunch of stuff like this, and it's just... Sif is now in charge of the Bifrost, because Heimdall died. You need to keep that retcon. You can't bring her brother back. Because he never said, um, at least I don't think. God forbid if he did. You can see everything. I want you to send me someplace where nobody will get hurt. Um, okay. And just... <sighs> Most of this fight was pretty good. A lot of the stuff they do in here, though. Continuity and understanding comic books. The Green Scar, the Indestructible Immortal Hulk. Yeah, he was called the Indestructible Hulk. He was called the Immortal Hulk. He was called the Green Scar. This is Donnie Kate saying, see, I know my stuff. Then he immediately turns around and shits the bed, Amber Heard style. The Golden Avenger, the Thunder King, the Mighty Thor. Hey, dude, just type the in the Golden Avenger. Type in the Golden Avenger in a Google search. Notice that Iron Man comes up, not Thor. <sighs> Most of this fight was actually pretty good, but you gotta get up to the, give it up to the artist for that. There's some weird things in here. Well, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna beat you up over it. What's that sound? Rain? You got rain? You think it's thunderstorm? Not a thunderstorm. That's Mjolnir breaking the sound barrier. So the fuck what? Most of this fight was pretty good. Banner decides he's going to go in, and then later on, what's his frick decides to go in? That is what it is. <clears throat> Most of this fight was pretty good. The comic book itself, though, one of two things is going to happen. Donnie is going to realize that he's going to vanish and never be talked about again, except as a passing joke. If he doesn't buckle down and start recognizing that he's got more talent than every other person working in Marvel today, Every other person. More talent than Kelly Thompson. And I love Kelly Thompson. And I couldn't help comparing this to what Kelly Thompson did with uh, Captain uh, Captain Marvel versus um, um, the Avengers, right? Including Thor. Really well thought. And if you didn't read it, you don't get to comment on it. It's as simple as that. If you perused it, you don't get to comment on it. Your comments are invalid. But if you read it, you know that at least she put some thought behind it. How did Carol beat Thor? Because Carol can't beat Thor, but Carol beat Thor. And it made sense. <coughs> some really emotional moments. That There was a lot that happened that was just, wow, really good. Really good. You know? Donnie has more talent than her, but he's not as good a comic book writer as she is. 
Does he care what I say? Maybe, if he's listening to this. I doubt it though, whatever. I don't care. I really don't care. <coughs> Donnie could wind up being like the guy. But all he does is a bunch of silly stuff. He tries to go, hey kids, look at this cool thing. Hey kids, look at that cool thing. Hey kids, wow. Family channel. At some point, Donnie's going to figure it out. And he's just going to start writing those great stories that he used to and stop relying on a bunch of silly tropes and wow, bang, boom, pow, crack a doom stuff. Nobody mastered the sound effects like Walt, uh, Walt Simonson did. Nobody. Not even King Kirby himself. And that Thor run, nobody mastered that. Nothing relied on big, shocking moments. But if there was a big, shocking moment, you never saw it before. You never saw it before. The whole thing with, um, you know, that hammer always returns to my hand. So if your head is still here, I feel bad for you, bro. <laughs> Literally, bro. That was Walter Simonson. That was in his Thor run. And so much more, the idea of putting the hammer on something and now you can't get up. And here it happens and he gets up anyways, but it rips a hole through him, literally through his spine. How strong do the Hulk's lat muscles have to be, right? How completely 0% love handles does the Hulk have to be for his muscles to keep him standing upright when he has no spine. <sighs> At some point, Donny Cates is going to figure it out. That this was a really good battle. But some of the extra stuff that happened in here was exactly that. It was stuff that took us out of the fight. It took me out of the fight for sure. It took me out of this battle. It just made me think, you know what would have been cool? If it was just a fight. If there was some trash talking back and forth. We watch basketball, right? It's all trash talking nowadays. These guys talk more trash than Bird and, and um, Johnson, you know? They're not as good as those guys were, but hey. But you know, this could have just been a good fight. Instead, we had a bunch of this silly stuff. Where we're reading a comic book with people who have an ultra ego where they could turn big and green, gamma radiated, and strongest one of the river. And another guy with a repeating, returning hammer, and he's a god in a big red cape. And we're still saying, that's kind of unbelievable. You get it? When your tropes are that bad, when your wow scenes are that bad, that it takes us out of this obviously fantastical element. At some point, take yourself seriously. So you can take your work seriously, so that we can take your work seriously. Until then, guys, it's been real, it's been fun, just hasn't been real fun. This was an otherwise pretty good comic book. All the other stuff, you know, the fight. Talk to you guys later. Like the video, watch an ad. Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.